Well, we're in Virginia City, Nevada, still. Yes. And uh, we're having a good time here. Oh, it's wonderful. It's really cool. There's another reason we came up to Virginia City, not just because it's a crazy weird town, yes. but the Virginia and Truckee Railroad is here. Nice. And uh, the museum down in Carson that we've been looking at is a museum really more than anything else to the Virginia and Truckee. And up here, some people have relayed the Virginia and Truckee all the way down to Carson City. So it's now possible to ride the train all the way down to Carson City. I wish you could go all the way to the museum, but you can't. But you can get to within a few miles of the museum and it's really cool and it's a really fun little railroad up here in Virginia City and well worth the trip up here, especially if you find yourself anywhere in the neighborhood like passing through Reno or something. A little side trip up here is well worth it. Virginia City was more or less dedicated in 1858 when a guy who was drunk from Virginia spilled his whiskey and said he was doing that to christen the place Virginia City. This is the Silver Queen Saloon and this is the Silver Queen Portrait. It's made up out of 3,261 silver dollars, Morgan silver dollars. There's one dollar for every foot of depth at the combination shaft. That's the deepest mine here in Virginia City. Virginia City is well known for its criminal activities, not just for its mining, and it was the birthplace of Mark Twain. Samuel Clements came here to seek gold and riches and instead found out that he was a pretty good writer, changed his name to Mark Twain. This is the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. It's been rebuilt up here. The Virginia and Truckee was built from Virginia City down to Reno, Nevada, only about 22 miles, and it was built to haul the fabulous riches of Virginia City down to the Central Pacific Railroad at Reno. Because of the incredible amount of wealth being made here in Virginia City, and keep in mind that much of that was being made legally, the Virginia and Truckee quickly became the most profitable short line in the world. They bought an incredible array of very early engines back then. And the cool thing is that as those engines would break down or wear out, they'd just stick them in a corner somewhere and buy another one because they had so much money scrapping something out didn't seem to make any sense. The early engines were all typical early locomotives, 440s and 260s and so on. Later on they bought 10-wheelers, just like this one we're riding behind here, Baldwin 10-wheelers. Now this one didn't actually run on the Virginia and Truckee, but two of these 10-wheelers are on display down at the museum in Carson City. Because so many of the early engines were preserved, a lot of them ended up in the hands of movie studios, and now those are on display, some down at Carson City. Many of them are in the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento, but the majority of them still survive. The locomotive shops here of the Virginia and Truckee are right where they always were, built clear back in the day, although they've been rather modernized for the tourist line here. When this line started to be rebuilt, they only built it a few miles down the canyon to start using it as a tourist line, but periodically after that they extended the track and now it reaches all the way down to Carson City, only a few miles from the Nevada State Railroad Museum there in Carson City. Now some might actually want to call the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Carson the Virginia and Truckee Museum. They're certainly well known for their Virginia and Truckee equipment, but they have equipment from a lot of other railroads as well. 25 here is one of those two 10-wheelers that are down here that used to run on the Virginia and Truckee. They have a little loop of track that runs around the museum so that they can take people for rides behind their operating engines. 
They've also been adding a third rail, turning this loop into dual gauge so that they can also operate their three foot gauge locomotives, as it happens that they have a couple of those now. They have four operating steam locomotives normally. This little 10 wheeler here, number 25, and like I say, they have another one of these Virginian Truckee 10 wheelers, which is not operational. They have a 440, number 22, known as the Inyo, and that operates quite well and it was operating on this particular day. They also have another 440. It was a military engine. I believe it was owned by the Army. Now, it's being rebuilt right now, so it wasn't operational. And their newest engine is called the Glenbrook. It's a little 440 narrow gauge engine that ran up at Lake Tahoe. This is the Glenbrook, and this is actually what brought us up here. These were the inaugural runs of the Glenbrook. It just came out of restoration and was dedicated just a few days ago. They have absolutely massive back shop areas here at the museum for restoration work. And they have a ton of really cool equipment stored indoors. This sort of peculiar looking bus sort of thing is called a McKean car. These were built in the 1920s and later, and the Virginia and Truckee acquired this one and ran it here on the Virginia and Truckee. It was extremely popular. People loved riding the McKean car up and down the Virginia and Truckee. The Virginia and Truckee's McKean car, number 22 here, has been immaculately restored by the restoration crew here at the Carson Museum, headed up by Chris DeWitt, who runs restorations here. It's diesel powered. They had to stick this brand new Caterpillar engine in it as the original engine was long gone. Virginia and Truckee 22, the Inyo here being turned on the Armstrong turntable, is the operational engine. There's another one very similar to this, another 440, which is not operational, called the Dayton, and it's currently on display in the Las Vegas area. But what beautiful, beautiful early locomotives, and hey, they run. So, that's the Virginia and Truckee oh, Railroad. Nice. It's It's such a little, itty bitty, little short line railroad. It it's is. so tiny. But it's, but it's, can I say cute? You can, you can say cute. But it's, it's uh, what did they call it, the queen of short line railroads. Something I mean, like that. they had the most beautiful equipment ever. Right. They didn't throw any of it away because no. they frankly didn't need the money. It was right. the richest short line in the world. Mm -hmm. So they'd buy new engines and just park the old engines. And then after a while, Hollywood figured out that they had the old engines and they were more interested in renting the old engines. So mm -hmm. most of those old engines are just still around. And it's cool that between the museum there at Carson and the museum in Sacramento and, of course, the ride up here in Virginia City, mm -hmm. you can really get a sense of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. That is so cool. It's almost all there. You can really get a sense of this itty-bitty little, what, 20, 30-mile-long railroad. Something like that. Just cool beyond all belief. Right. Well, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, Oh dear. dear, why, why, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't cost anything, it's the blue button, just click on the blue button and then everything is good and you will be subscribed and you'll get a lovely little email every Sunday when the new movie goes up saying right. the new movie has gone up right. and telling you what the movie is about so you can decide if you want to watch it, which of course you do, always want because they're it. always great. Yeah. So subscribe to the channel and get over to the channel. You can click on the little blue rocket ship logo down here and that'll take you to the channel and you can watch the almost 80 movies that are it's over there. It's getting close to 100. We're getting there and we're going to throw a big party, oh, yes. big party when we get to 100 because right. that's going to be really That will be cool. awesome. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. Heavens, no. And we will see you here again next Sunday with some more significant screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.